Hi, I'm Andy and you're watching Camera Cravings. If you're new to the channel, we do gear reviews, tutorials and helpful information for photographers and videographers. So today I'm going to be doing my first Luminar 4 tutorial and what I'd like to show you is how to do a simple sky replacement within Luminar 4. In addition to that, I'd like to show you how to replace the sky reflection in any water you have in that image also. And the image we're gonna take is this one, which I shot in Sweden a couple of years ago. And as you can see, it's quite a drab sky that evening. And what actually happened was later that evening, I shot in a slightly different location and the sunset was absolutely stunning and the sky really came alight. And so I'm gonna use the sky from that image and try and put it onto this image. What we're gonna go from is from this image to something that looks like this. And as you can see, we've got the sky, we've got the reflection of the sky in the water and actually we've relit the scene slightly to give it more of a pink hue because that's what was happening at the time when I took the sky image. I'm showing you this in Lightroom but obviously you can do this straight from Luminar 4. So I'm just going to open up Luminar 4 from Lightroom. And once you are in Luminar 4, the first thing you're going to want to do is probably just get rid of these looks which are down at the bottom of the screen. I'll just get my mouse pointer on. So down here you've got the looks, you can get rid of those by just clicking this button here. And then we've got our image. And the next thing you'll do is you'll go over to the panel on the right hand side and go to the creative panel, which is the second one down, click on that. And up at the top of that, you've got AI sky replacement. We're gonna go into that. And then we've got sky selection here at the top. Now, Luminar 4 has a load of inbuilt skies such as these and I'll show you one now which you can drop in there and that's fine but if you want to reflect the water the sky in the water you're going to need to use one of your own custom skies so I'm going to load a custom sky here down at the bottom and as you can see I've got a couple here I'm going to use this Sweden sky pink purple so you go open that and what will happen is it will drop it in onto your image. And that's fine, but as you can see, if we zoom in slightly where the yacht is in the distance, it hasn't quite blended it properly on the horizon line there. It looks a bit odd and a bit messy. It's done quite a good job over the rocks. So what I would do is come up to horizon blending and that is set to 20. And actually what I'm gonna do is just stay zoomed in so I can see what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do is lift that up slightly. So we're just bringing, as you can see, just starting to bring that blend up. And what I'm actually gonna do is just bring it up to about, probably about 60. And then you've also got horizon position which you can mess around with to your heart's content. As you can see, that makes quite a big difference. Um, but I'm just gonna bring that back up and leave it at around, probably around four. So I quite like the way that blends into the sea there. So if we zoom back out, we can now see that that's done quite a nice job. We've got our sky, but the, sea, the rest of the scene still looks quite dull and drab. And one way to improve that is to go to Relight Scene, and you can play around with this value. And as you'll see on this image, I'll push it to 100 just to show you. It's made everything quite pink. You can see the difference as I toggle that up and down. Um, what I'm gonna do is just add it a little bit so I'm going to go to about 45 and we've got other settings here in advanced we don't really need to look at any of those I'll do a separate video just on the sky replacement but this particular one I wanted to talk about the um, 
the reflection in water more than anything. So, so there we go, that's what we had before and that's what we've got now. And then what you're going to want to do is go up to the um, Layers tab up at the top right there. And then you need to go into um, the little plus sign there, Create Layer, and you're going to want to do a Add New Image Layer. So that is the same image layer. We're going to open that one up, and as you'll see, it will fill the entire image here. And that's fine for now. What we want to do, though, is flip it horizontally so that it's reflecting what we have in the sky. So we're going to go to Layer Transform, click that, and then up here on the left-hand side, you've got Flip Horizontal, Flip Vertical, and you've got Rotate. So we're going to do Flip Vertical, and as you can see, it's done that now. Now what some people would do at this stage is they would just lower the opacity to see what was happening, um, which is fine. I don't really need to do that particularly because I'm actually going to pull it down to where the horizon line is, which is fairly easy to do. You just drag it down with your mouse and bring it to roughly about there. What I've done is I've dragged it over while I'm doing that. So that looks about right to me. And if I click done, <coughs> as you can see now, if we if we take it up to 100%, obviously it blocks everything. If we lower it right down to say 20%, you can see what we're going to get at the end of this. But what we need to do is now just paint it onto the area we want it, i.e. the water, and we don't want it on any of these rocks. So what you then go to is the edit mask and the brush tool. And up here you've got paint for the plus sign and erase is the minus sign. So if you start painting, what I'm going to do is I'll keep my brush size fairly small because I'm got a it's not a huge gap that I'm filling here. And I'll keep the softness at 100 percent You can obviously change this depending on how you want to do it. But you can use the left and right bracket keys to make your brush larger and smaller. That should be fine for me. And as you can see, as I start to paint that on, I'm getting that sky reflection from above. But it's kind of blending nicely with the existing image. And obviously you can take your time over this. I'm going to do it fairly quickly for the purposes of the video, um, just to show you. So if I just paint over all of that, all of that area, that's fine. And what I'm actually going to do is just up the opacity a little bit to maybe 35. And what's happened now though is that this area near the yacht, obviously I've painted a little bit over the rocks there. So what I'm going to do is just zoom right in and just reduce the size of my brush down. And then I'm going to click up here and go to the arrays and I'm just going to brush that off of the rocks there. And obviously you can do this as little as much as you like. I'm actually going to try and just brush it a little bit off of the sea in this area actually because I find that that's a little bit yellow up there anyway and what I want is for it to blend a little bit better. So I'm just going to take it off the rocks there and just take it off the rocks there. And up here just going to take it off the rocks as well. And this effect will work better on some images than others. This image in particular isn't the best example because my water wasn't completely flat uh, and it wasn't a particularly long exposure. But obviously you may have an image with kind of glass-like water. And 
what I'm going to do actually is just bring the opacity down because I don't like how much it's on here. And then I'm just going to paint a little bit back in here. And then just take it back off the there. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, when I did this, when I was practicing this tutorial, I did it much more cleanly. But you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. You can see there where I've painted. If you click that little eye, you can see where I've painted um, that mask. So I can actually just go to the arrays because there's a bit of mist on these rocks. And doesn't look quite right if I just come along there and the same just down this side just want to take it a little bit off of there where those shadows of the rocks are and a little bit off of there as well but yeah so it's quite easy to see where you have painted and where you haven't using the mask functions and you can change the density of that mask and the feather and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so one thing that we can do to have a play around with and try and make it look a bit more realistic is if we up that opacity a little bit, let's take it up to 30, let's take it up to 40 just to illustrate the point. If you go to the blend mode of the layer, you can actually have a look at the different blend modes and they do change quite significantly how it looks. I've found that for this kind of stuff overlay or soft light works quite well so in this case for example soft light looks pretty nice and I think it just you can then kind of play around with the opacity again and see see where you're at but it's quite a nice way of doing it and something that I haven't seen many other people talk about gives you a little bit more flexibility. If you then want to make some more global adjustments to the image to just try and balance everything out, that's easy enough to do. All you need to do is go to New Layer and Create New Stamped Layer, and that will then essentially merge the two layers into one and we end up with a single layer that if you then go to light for example and you want to adjust the exposure you can and it's adjusting the whole image now. If I then wanted to play around with the image, lift the shadows slightly, drop the highlights a little bit, maybe add a bit of contrast, that's something you can do. I quite like the AI Sky Enhance feature on here quite nice for boosting contrast and saturation and similarly you can do the same with the AI accent which will do the same to the lower portion of the image or the kind of areas down there so I hope that's been helpful that's just quite a quick demonstration of how this tool can be used I hope you found this helpful if you have please give a like and um, drop me a comment below if there's anything else you'd like to see me run through in tutorials for Luminar 4 and if you haven't already do follow me on Instagram at Andrew Price Images or Camera Cravings UK post quite regular content on there and uh, tell you about what's coming up in future videos and I'd be grateful if you could also subscribe to the channel um, I've just gone over 135 subscribers Fairly new channel, but heading towards 20,000 views as well. So, so far, really happy with how it's gone. Really grateful to all the people who have subscribed so far. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.